So today we have a Holley 670 Street Avenger carburetor in front of us and we're going to go ahead and use it as a model here to kind of demonstrate some of the ideas and thought process behind getting the proper jetting for your carburetor and your engine setup. So to begin, the first thing that I like to do when starting in with an unknown engine, unknown carburetor, is I like to uh, take the carburetor itself, look up what the stock jetting is, and uh, get some jets and set the carburetor back to the stock jetting. Um, that really helps to create a baseline and that's really the parameters that the carburetor was designed under. So like I said, from there that you can get a baseline. Now the next thing before you want to start playing with your jets and what will give you some odd readings if you don't have this set right is your float bowl height. Now your float bowl height is set real simply by um, loosening your nut here and then, or your screw here, and then you'll pop this nut up off the seal so you don't turn it and break this uh, seal. And once it's popped up, then you'll, uh, um, you'll loosen it to raise the float and tighten it down to drop the float. And I usually go, you know, maybe a quarter to an eighth of a turn at a time and then check. But and we've gone over this in previous videos, so I'm not gonna get too in depth with that. But uh, on these Hollies, you want your fuel level to be right here at the bottom of the sight plug. Now, um, what has a, plays a big factor in float bowl height with your fuel is your fuel pressure. Now, uh, if you're really run, running a performance vehicle, you're going to want to do the best you can to regulate this. So one thing I like to do is I like to run a fuel pressure regulator as close to the carburetor as possible and that way you can negate any of the adverse effects of heat and things of that nature so um, you know best case scenario you have a regulator right beside the carburetor but it's okay if you have the regulator a ways away just you want to be as close as possible again now why the pressure is important is if the pressure increases um, your float bowl height will rise and then if your uh, pressure drops it will also um, lower and uh, this causes issues with your jetting because it's your carburetor is designed to have that fuel right at that height and by the weight and different barometric pressures um, you know it's it'll pull the jet circuit in at the right time and if this isn't at the right height you know that timing is going to be off so it's really important that you can keep a um, you know, a nominal pressure going to your carburetor. If it's moving around, you're going to have issues with your, uh, you know, jetting moving around. That's a big deal. And also, that's why in previous videos here, I've emphasized a carb spacer to keep the heat off the carburetors. When that fuel gets hot in the bowls, it's going to expand, and then you get those uh, varying height issues again, and um, you have a lot of trouble. So if you've seen my other videos of my own cars, I'll run a one-inch phenolic spacer, and then um, I have a regulator and I, it's closely monitored with a return line. So um, I keep a consistent pressure at all times, idle to wide open throttle, it's all consistent. So I realize I've been talking here and I haven't necessarily uh, showed the jets on the Holly carburetor. So um, they're real simple to get to. You just remove your four bowl screws here and uh, you'll remove your bowl. Now if your bowl is tight on here like they oftentimes like to be, you know, just try and grab onto it here and work it back and forth. Um, as you see here when it's removed it's on some pins so if you go prying on it you know you have a chance of you know cracking your float bowl and stuff of that nature so you don't and you definitely don't want to go sticking a screwdriver in between the mating surface. Um, you'll gall it up and You'll have a leaky carburetor as a result, so just be patient when you're taking it apart. I promise it'll come apart fairly simply if you, uh, you know, just show a little patience. So as I had mentioned before, in getting that uh, baseline setting on your carburetor where you're putting the factory jets back in, and now you can uh, um, work from this point. So um, the first thing you want to look at is altitude. Now, uh, Holly sets their carburetors up at sea level. So, and most of us don't live at sea level. So, um, for every 700 to 800 feet, 
you will most likely need to alter your jetting to be uh, keeping in with how the carburetor was designed and to run the right air fuel mixtures. So um, I like to, for about every 700 to 1,000 feet or so, um, you know, the higher you go, the less air molecules you have. So you need to jet down your carburetor to keep the air fuel ratio the same. And I drove my Galaxy uh, from Iowa to Virginia, and as I went through the West Virginia mountains, I actually had to rejet my carburetor several times. So um, keeping this in mind, and just um, as you would jet it up, as you go down every 700 to 1,000 feet, you have more uh, molecules of oxygen and then you need to increase your jet size accordingly. Now keeping with this discussion where we're going over the density of the air, um, you want to keep in mind that when in, at colder temps the air is going to be more dense so you're getting more oxygen. So uh, and these carburetors are set up at sea level somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees so you want to keep that in mind. Now another rule of thumb that I like to go off of is uh, for um, every 20 degree increase in temperature you want to uh, jet down your carburetor because um, again when it's hotter your the air has expanded there's not as much oxygen so you're gonna have to jet down your carburetor you're gonna be running too rich so and likewise as it gets colder away from that 70 to 80 degrees um, you're going to have to uh, jet up your carburetors. You're going to be getting more oxygen because in colder temps, the air is denser. Um, that's also why, you know, when your, your car tires, it gets cold out, it's like your pressure goes down. And that's not because you're losing tire pressure. It's just that the molecular composition of the air is just getting more dense. So it's the same ideology here with carburetors. So a few final uh, extraneous pieces here that are going to affect your overall carb jetting that I want to go over. Um, in a lot of cases, your engine combo is going to play a factor into your carb jetting. So, uh, and specifically your intake manifold. Uh, the longer your runners are, the bigger jets you're going to need and the more you're going to have to go away from that baseline. So if you have a high-rise intake, which um, you know, might be raised maybe an inch more than your standard low-rise intake, you know, that's going to require bigger jets. And on top of that, when you have carburetor spacers that, again, move your carburetor farther away from your engine, you're going to, again, need to up your jet size. So that's something to keep in mind and that you need to account for when uh, setting up your carburetor. And um, just the same with uh, dual-plane and single-plane intakes. Single-plane intakes are more open so they hurt that signal and you're going to have to run bigger jets because of that. And, uh, you know, where a dual plane doesn't necessarily hurt the carburetor signal as much. Now the same goes with spacers where an open spacer will require, um, you know, larger jetting size where a four hole spacer keeps some of that carburetor velocity and still requires uh, you to jet up in most cases, but just not as much. So. Those are some little bits and pieces to keep in mind when you're uh, jetting your carburetor. So as you can see, setting your carburetor jetting is not too terribly difficult. A lot of people on the internet make it out to be a lot worse than it really is. And uh, um, it's, it's really very straightforward if you know the finer details and understand kind of the functioning of the carburetor and how different conditions um, you know, are going to alter your jetting of your carburetor. Um, again, I really like to stress keeping the heat off of your carburetor and keeping a consistent pressure because, again, those are going to move your float around and then, um, you know, it's going to kind of throw off your, uh, the functioning of your jet circuit. It's not going to function as it was designed to. So, and again, um, I know I've mentioned it a few times here in my carburetor videos. I like to run an O2 sensor. It cuts out all the guesswork. You can see when you're in the throttle, what your air fuel ratio is, and it really helps with tuning. Like I said, I drove a carbureted car to, all the way from Iowa to Virginia, 1,400 miles, and um, I could see directly when I needed to change my jets. So again, that takes a lot of the guesswork out, but anyway, I hope this video overall took some of the guesswork out for you, 
and you know you'll have a better understanding when you're moving forward with your carburetor jetting.